All right, guys, I've got the trailer module installed. This is the first startup. I want to see what error messages I get when the uh, when we start up here. So, I'm gonna let uh, okay, yeah. So that's that's the expected message down there, the trailer electrical system error message. And what we'll do is let's go over here to iDrive. And we'll look at my vehicle, and I believe this is under status. I think I think this is where we'll check it here. Uh, ah, there we go. Yep. So this is what's expected. Now the reason here is that since this is a BMW, of course we have to register the module. And this is the, the message that, that you get. It, so it does detect it. It sees that the module is there, but it also sees that the car did not come with it. And so that module has to be registered with the system to say, hey, this module exists. So that's what I've got to do next. I've got to get the computer out here and get it connected up and register that module. And I've got a couple of different ways to try that. I'm pretty sure that I've done a lot of research on this. I'm pretty sure that you cannot do this with a module such as uh, Bimmer code or anything like that. You have to actually get it. Um, you have to actually get it added to the the vehicle order is what has to happen. So anyway, that's what I've got to do. Um, now, one of the nice things is that from the uh, camera perspective, I think. Let me. Let me see here if I go into go into reverse and turn off my uh, but you can see uh, sorry about the beep but you can see I do have the trailer oh there we go I do have the trailer option already turned on and I did that you can do that with Bimmer code but you can see as I turn the wheel it does turn the line there, and of course, when I have the hitch installed, it'll it'll show up there. But that piece of it is already enabled in the system, and we can go ahead and and see that um, uh, within the uh, within the settings. So so that that's a good sign or a good thing that we already have that. I just need to get this message fixed here, and uh, that'll be coming up next. Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about programming the trailer control box. Um, I forget what the official name of it, but it's the K235 conversion or retrofit for a BMW. In my case, it's the F15. And specifically, I want to talk about how I got it to finally get programmed. Um, so a, a few different things. Um, number one, I've tried with ISTA, I've tried with ESIS, I've tried all different sorts of things. And what I finally was able to do was to go in and I found some posts on uh, one of the, the forum sites. Uh, I think it was bimmerforums.com. I'll put the link in the description below. But uh, basically what I figured out is that you can't, for that particular retrofit, uh, what you have to do is you cannot edit the vehicle order, which normally under ESIS, and this was the guide that I used as well as uh, numerous posts uh, online, but uh, this was a guide, it's called ESIS VO Coding. Um, it's a PDF file that, that is pretty common out there. You can go and search for it. But basically, I use this to follow the instructions on how to edit the vehicle order, which normally what you would do is, is you would go down here to this section and you would add in, in this case, it would be the 235 option. But if you go in and you add in the, the 235 option and you commit it, when you right click and do calculate FP, you would get an error. Uh, and in, in this case, it's doing just fine, of course. But if you, if you edit that, you'll get an error message, and there's no way around it. 235 is not a valid uh, Salapa component or element, whatever you want to call it. But what I did find was another post online, and it said 
that you can add K235 under HO wart. And actually in the instructions for this particular retrofit, it's referred to as K235. HO wart is, it, as I understand it, it's basically a retrofit or conversion. And you can go in here and you can right click and do new HO wart. You put in the element number here, which in this case is K235. And let me delete this. But when you do that and you, uh, you save it and then you calculate the FP, it succeeds. No problem at all. And, and in fact, uh, and I, I don't remember, uh, in, in the later versions here, they, they took away all the comments. So you can't really see the specifics over here. But the K235 conversion, which is a retrofit, does work. So I did this. And then once you have done that, then when you go into coding, and I'm, I'm not actually connected to my car right now, uh, but when you, when you go into coding and you do the read ECU, you'll see the modules down here. The module shows up without any issue at all. What I had to do, though, is there's no way to do a direct injection of the CAFD file. Uh, or the basically, I guess it's like the firmware to align it. So what I had to do was to do a full flash of that particular module, and I followed this guide right here. Uh, this is one, again, it's called uh, uh, ESIS Flashing ECU Guide. There are a few things that are different, but basically I followed through the process that's described in this document, and... I was able to successfully finally get it flashed. I only flashed the AAG module, which is just the trailer module. When I uh, pulled up the list of, um, of the different modules that it wanted to flash, it did also want to flash the head unit. I did not do that. I left the head unit alone. I only flashed the AAG module. Um, the general thinking with, with BMW modules is you only flash when you need to flash. You don't just upgrade for the sake of upgrading. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. The other thing, too, that is that is likely to happen is that any preferences that you saved are going to get reset. Uh, any coding that you might have done with, like, Bimmer code or something like that, those frequently are, uh, are going to get reset when you go in and you uh, flash a module, especially like a head unit or the uh, or the instrument cluster, for example. And in fact, even just me flashing this, I had to go in and turn my heads up display back on. It, it reset back to an off position and I didn't even touch that module, but no big deal. That was the only thing I checked all of my other preferences and everything else that I saved in the unit and or saved in the in the car. And that was the only one that got reset. So that is, is what I was able to do there. Now, I will note, and I think if I go down here, um, give me just a second here. Oh, yeah. So eventually you'll get to a page like this where it'll have the check boxes on it. That's, like I said, I, I only checked the boxes for the, uh, here's a close-up view. I only checked the boxes for uh, the AAG module that I needed to flash. I didn't flash anything else. Um, but when the flashing is done and I can't remember if it was in this guide or not. Um, yeah, it's not in this guide, but I did see it posted on one of the forums. Uh, basically what happened was, um, I was able to, uh, or, or not able to, let me rephrase that after the flashing was done it went through and I basically got a ton of error messages. Uh, the, the check engine light kicked on, everything kicked on. So I went into Bimmer Link. I did a full reset of the, uh, of the info memory as well as cleared all the DTC codes. And you'll see that posted in the forums in some places is that once you've done a flash, you need to go through and clear all that. It's just not in this particular guide, or at least if it was, I missed it. But anyway, I went in and I, I removed or cleared all those out. The car is working perfectly fine now. So uh, I still haven't hooked up my trailer just yet to, to do a full test on it. But overall, you can do this with 
just ESYS. The version that I just happened to use was 3.40.2, uh, 64-bit version. Uh, you do need, in order to do a flash, you do need the full uh, PSDZ data. And this is a big set of data. It's, as you can see here on my computer, it's it's uh, about uh, 281 gigabytes worth of data. And uh, it's, I will tell you, just go ahead and pay the five bucks for the mega uh, to download it, um, which is usually where it gets hosted. I, I think there might be some torrents out there, although they're they're a little bit more tricky to find. The it's just easier just to go and pay the five bucks, download it, and uh, once you've got it downloaded, you know save it off somewhere, and um, and that's what I did. And then I had upgraded the hard drive in my computer here, so. Um, I went ahead and saved the full out here to this drive. You could do it on a flash drive if you have one big enough uh, and, uh, and and plug it in. And then just the nice thing about ESIS is that you can go in, whoops, you can go into settings and you can customize the folder where you store the files. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in a set folder. You can put that anywhere you want. And um, I suppose you could do it to a network drive. I would not recommend it because you are flashing. So uh, just remember that you know if that connection were to be disturbed, you could could cause some harm, uh, and you certainly don't want that to happen. You definitely want this to be all local, and of course you want this to be the only thing running when you're doing the connection. Um, and I did use, by the way. Um, uh, uh, it doesn't list it here, but I did use for my connection uh, an Enet cable, which I got off of Amazon. Again, I'll I'll post a link in the description below. But um, uh, I did any. Now here's a little little tip. Um, so you want to select the the latest for your model, which for the F15 is is the F25 as well. They use the same code base. But in one of the doc, in fact, in this document over here, it actually says up here at the top when you're establishing the connection. Um, yeah, it actually says to do the connection via gateway URL. So it, it says to do this option here. Now, I tried that connection and it gave me an error. So every time I connected, I could do connect via ICOM, or once you do that uh, and, and hit refresh, the connect via VIN will pop up. So I always did connect via VIN, and when, when I do the connect via VIN, I got through just about everything here. Actually, I did get through everything here, except at the very end where it tells you to do the programming, which is, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think it's just when you get down here to do the programming and you'll see just underneath here, there it says log. When, when you do that, I ended up, and I can show you, because I saved my log file. So what I got when I first did this was this error here. So I got this uh, uh, basically fatal error while executing tau. There was an error, check the log files. It doesn't really tell you anything. And I thought, oh gosh, it's never gonna work. So I came over here to the connection. I left everything running, left the car running, left all this running. I came over here and I went to connection and I did the connect via gateway URL, tried the connect, got an error, did the connect via VIN again, hit connect and then came right back to the pro to the screen and I hit start again and it worked. I have no idea why it worked, but it did. And you can see uh, from the log file here, let's expand this out so you can see it. It, it went through and I was able to, you know, it, it did the preparation, prepared the ECU, prepared the update and it did the BL flash it did that, and then it did the software deploy. 
and then it did what's called the CD deploy status finished and it took you can see here it took on my car it took five and a half minutes in order to do that so it does take a while to do it but it's not that long um, at least for the AAG unit I cannot explain why it went through and failed on that first go and then I did reconnected and it it succeeded but that was what happened on mine um, just a, a little oddity I guess but it did work and as I said it, it's working now so that was my experience with programming this module uh, I would say that uh, you know, if, if you have any issues, the probably the best place to look is, is honestly do a Google search. It's usually going to end up pointing you out to the, the Bimmer forums. Uh, and there's, plenty, there's, there's actually several of those out there, but they all have a coding sub forum that you can go through and look at. So those are, are really the best place to go for information. And if you post like an error message or your experience of what's going on, what kind of error you're getting, you'll usually get um, someone that, that's coming back and, and saying, well, here's what my experience was uh, and here's what you might try or here's, here's what you're doing wrong. In the case of the trailer harness, though, um, or, or at least the AAG unit, if, you're, uh, if your system or if your uh, build did not come with it from the factory, do it as the HO wart and add it as the retrofit K235, and then write that vehicle order back to the car. Remember to write the vehicle order back to the car before you do any, any uh, unit programming. And um, that was it. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you guys uh, get some use out of this video. And, uh, and if there is something that, uh, that I can do to help answer questions, you're welcome to post here. And you're also... Uh, as well, uh, welcome to, to see me on the forums. I, I usually show up as uh, Tahoe9813 on the Bimmer forums, and um, I'm always glad to, uh, to help out wherever I can. So again, thanks for watching, and good luck.